Gavin Mooney, the general manager at Calusa, has put together some insane data. There is a literally a tidal wave of batteries coming to Australia. I've been saying this now for a while, but someone has gone and actually done the work. Batteries are about to be increased across Australia by over 4,000%. I kid you not. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. Thank you for becoming a member of the channel. We just got up to a record number of members. We have, I believe, 400 members. So if you'd like to join us as a member, that would be great. I'll put a link in the description below. Battery prices have come down. As I mentioned in a video last week, the price of batteries has fallen by 51% over the past 12 months. Now that is at the cell level. At the pack level, they have not fallen that much, but they still have come down by around 25%. However, battery pack prices continue to fall. And at the same time, batteries are lasting longer than ever with better battery management systems, improvements in battery chemistry, and guarantees from battery companies for 25 years. We know that if you install a battery today, it will last longer than if you installed a battery last year or the previous year before. And in addition, they're also cheaper. Now, Gavin Mooney says that in Australia, batteries are booming. This map that he's put together only shows the large batteries being built. Now, there is one mega battery being built actually only about 20 kilometers away from my house, and it will power 200,000 homes. But that's not one of the bigger batteries, though. The width of each rectangle in this map is scaled to the battery's power capacity in megawatts, and the height is scaled to the battery's energy storage capacity in megawatt hours. So a battery with one hour duration would be a square. Now, before I go on, there is a flood of batteries coming to Australia's main grid in the next couple of years as falling prices spur a huge increase in investment. And this increase in investment is literally growing by the week. Gavin says that with the rooftop solar spending, sending midday energy prices negative, battery developers are being paid to charge up in the middle of the day. And with a steady three gigawatts of new rooftop solar every year, there's 4.2 million houses in Australia with solar. This arrangement will continue for a while until there is enough midday demand to raise prices. Really, right now, we are wasting literally billions of dollars in, in energy in Australia. This will solve that. We won't be wasting all that solar. We won't be wasting all those, all the energy we are generating in peak periods, especially during the day, during the sunny period of the day. We'll be storing that in these mega batteries. Australia's first grid scale battery was the Hornsdale Power Reserve in South Australia. That's the Tesla battery. Elon Musk made a bit of a wild promise. He said, if we don't build that within 100 days, it's free. It works so well, they doubled the size of that battery. That was commissioned in 2017, and it was the biggest in the world at the time. In the seven years since then, Australia's main grid has installed a total of 1,813 megawatt slash 2,570 megawatt hours of battery storage. This may sound like a lot, but it's nothing in comparison to what's coming, says Gavin. There are already enough battery projects being commissioned at the moment to roughly double the amount of battery storage we have in the entire grid. And there are another 6,110 megawatts slash 15,712 megawatt hours of batteries that are already under construction. Batteries are quick to deploy, so these are all likely to be complete within one to two years. These batteries will help to stabilize the grid as well as shifting solar generation from the middle of the day to the evening peak. Like much like California, right? Energy is expensive in Australia between 6 and 9 p.m. And that will change. That will change because we'll have plenty of electricity. In fact, we'll have more than we need. And those batteries will suck up all the energy during the day and shoot all that energy back into the grid in that evening peak. There is an even bigger pipeline of projects though that are not yet under construction. Batteries are coming in a big way, but batteries are also coming in a big way with electric cars and vehicle to grid. Now you might already have a vehicle that is actually capable of vehicle to grid. Some Teslas have it, some BYDs do, there's some other car brands that do as well. And now that vehicle to grid has been approved in Australia, that will launch an entire 
new avalanche of battery storage into the Australian grid. Now, these numbers here don't include any of that. They don't, they don't include any home battery storage. People who have Tesla Powerwalls or home batteries. This is just large batteries in Australia. In the next one to two years, NEM, as in the electricity market battery power, will increase by 4,200%, while battery energy storage will increase 7,300%. Do we really need coal? I don't think so. Do we really need nuclear either? Absolutely not. If you want to know where these batteries are and some details about them, here they are. The Victorian big battery is the largest in Australia at the moment at 300 megawatts slash 450 megawatt hours. And it was the largest in the Southern Hemisphere when it was built three years ago, but it will soon be dwarfed by other much bigger batteries. The Waratah Super Battery is 850 megawatts slash 1,680 megawatt hours. That's one of the biggest in the world. The Melbourne Renewable Energy Hub is 600 megawatts slash 1,600 megawatt hours. The Collie Battery in WA is 500 megawatts slash 2,000 megawatt hours. And they're building a few of those, in fact, in Western Australia. That means that Australia's battery capacity will more than triple over the next 18 months. Some of the recent announcements as well include enormous batteries that are even bigger than those ones I just mentioned, including Kemerton in WA, which is 660 megawatts slash 2,640 megawatt hours. Portland in Victoria, 1,000 megawatts slash 2,500 megawatt hours. And the incredible Goy de North, which is, I believe, the biggest, one of the, maybe the top three in the world. That one is 900 megawatts slash 3,600 megawatt hours. So battery duration periods have transitioned away from one hour being the norm to four hours, and in many cases, eight hours. In fact, the standard is now eight hours for many of the new battery projects coming online. That's a real big benefit. That gives us really the ability to power, you know, an entire grid. When the, as soon as the sun goes down to the point as you know, when the sun basically comes up in the morning, you'd have a transition period. You might even use two batteries during that period of time. But keep in mind, wind will power some of that period. When the sun goes down, might be 5 p.m., could be 9 p.m., depending on what time of the year it is. But wind generation will provide some of that power and batteries will provide the rest. The entire Australian grid is very likely to be 100% renewable by around 2032 from the numbers that I'm seeing. I know you guys say I'm an optimist, but actually the problem with people who are trying to point out how this won't work is they're just seeing the problems. They're not seeing the technological solutions. And technological solutions are coming at us so fast with artificial intelligence. Now some of the fastest AI computers in the world are being built. And they're solving a lot of the problems, a lot of the bottlenecks. And as a result, we're seeing much cheaper solar every year. We're seeing solar prices come down by more than 90% over the last 10 years. We're seeing the efficiency of solar panels basically double over the same period, same period of time. We're seeing those same, those same solar panels last for much longer. And the same things are happening to the prices of batteries. As a result, batteries and solar, and particularly those two technologies, continue to get cheaper and cheaper. Their output continues to grow. The longevity of those products continues to increase, and it's a virtuous cycle. The actual amount of battery storage that we have here in Australia is about to increase by 7,200% within less than 24 months. This will disrupt the entire electricity market. This will disrupt coal. This will disrupt fossil fuels. It is going to disrupt everything. If you work in these industries that might be disrupted, you need to consider the future because this is not about to change. Just because some dude on YouTube is anti-renewable anti energy doesn't mean the trajectory that facts will change as a result of feelings. There are many people spreading false information on YouTube, on big news media websites, be very careful of what you read. Are you simply reading something because it makes you feel safe? Nothing is safe.